Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is a larger version of the Sweet Wrapper gift box um, that I shared earlier. Um, as soon as I made that one with the 6x6 papers, I knew I wanted to make one with 12x12. I wanted it bigger and I wanted to use um, these wonderful papers and it was a perfect gift for my nan who I'm going to see next week. So here it is closer. This is using one sheet of 12 by 12. Gives you a really nice size box in the middle. I've decorated it all with this lovely Dovecraft's Nature's Grace um, paper pack and um, all the matching um, bits and pieces with it. And then just finished it off with this lovely velvet ribbon. Really straightforward to make, just the same as the six by six. Um, just different measurements. So let's crack on and make it. Okay, so you're going to need to make this larger sweetie um, or sweet wrapper box. Um, so I'm using, I shared this on my Facebook page, oh, not a few, well, a few days ago really, um, but I was really excited to get my hands on this. So this is the Dovecraft Nature's Grace paper pack, 12 by 12. You can see all of the prints here and I'll share all the links below to where I purchased it. Um, so I've just taken some bits from that and I also, um, these are matching stamps that go with the set so I picked those up. These are little rosettes that match as well. I usually make my own rosettes but I did really like these ones. Um, get about 10 or something like that in the pack. Again, I'll share all the links. This is some ribbon that I already had. I picked up these um, doilies because I, I want to use them as like a background on the decoration on the top. Um, and then I have got my letters already done. I'm going to show you how I distressed those. Get rid of all these bits. Okay, so this is the paper I've chosen from the pack today. So first of all, what you want to do is score. So bear in mind, so the, the two score lines that I'm doing here are the sides of the sweetie wrapper. So they're where we do those, cut those triangle um, shapes. So bear that in mind with your print. So what these two score lines I'm about to do, you wanna make sure that your pattern is facing the right way up, okay? So first of all, we're gonna score at, let's just see where I've done these. So three and a half, all the way down, and then at eight and a half, all the way down. Okay, then rotate the card onto the other side and you want to score at one and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, then you want to score at four and, no sorry, five and seven eighths of an inch. Then at seven and three quarters and then at eleven and three quarters. You should have a little quarter inch tab on the right hand side. So again, I'll just go through that again. So it was one and seven eighths of an inch and then it was five and seven eighths of an inch, seven and three quarters of an inch, and 11 and three quarters of an inch. Sorry, it's a really busy print, so I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting them all correct, but that's right. And I'll again put all these measurements, I'll write them all down in my blog, so it's probably best to follow that as well. Okay, so that's all the scoring done. So I'm get rid of and our we want to burnish board. those score lines that we've just made. So just carefully, again this is a just a good quality paper so you don't need to really worry about using your bone tool. Sometimes with the papers you might end up burnishing them too much and then they end up um, ripping or really weakening that score line. Okay, so that's all of the um, score lines burnished. Now flip it over, okay, and ignore this faint line that you'll see here, that's where I was practicing and I put it in wrong um, but I've rubbed them out and you can't see them on the other side it's only this side that you can so what we want to do now is probably best if we cut first and then I'll go through the other bit for those of you that watch the smaller two um, box that I made of this you'll probably just whiz through it now because you'll know what I'm going to do but I've got the tab here on the left hand side I'm just cutting up that very thin piece there and then just Cutting it at an, an angle just to create a little tab there and just remove that completely. Okay, do the same with this other end of it. So just turn it around and again just cut neatly. I'm, I'm actually cutting to the left of the score line, so I'm removing that kind of lumpy bit just so you don't see it. And again, just cutting that on an angle. Okay, so just created a little tab there. So with the tab there now on the right hand side. You've got your re little rectangle, a big square, rectangle and another big square. You just want to cut up each of those score lines, just up to the first score line. 
And again, I'm just removing that lumpy bit of that score line that we created. And what that will also mean is you just don't get any overhang. I mean, we're going to be cutting a chunk of this out anyway, so you won't really see most of it. And again, just cut down. And I'm just again removing this last one and then you just want to do the same on the top here just cut down each of those score lines okay like so. so that's what you should have so I've got the tab on the left hand side all of these cut down to this middle bit and again on the bottom here okay so now on these big squares that we've got on the outside you just want to do a very light um, pencil mark just from corner you may not want to do this if you if you know what you're doing um, and you know where to kind of roughly cut if you can eyeball it all then you don't need to worry about this but I just find this just helps me kind of get it in this um, you know similar um, place as to the opposite ones um, and obviously these ones when they sit on top of each other so again just do a cross on all four of those big squares okay so you can see now I've just drawn those crosses on those four big squares. Now all we need to do is use those as a guide and basically just starting from the outside of this one here, okay you can just see me in the bottom, I'm just cutting up but then I'm going to start cutting away from the pencil mark until I get to the middle of the cross here and I want that to be where the scissors end, okay so you can see there what I've cut. I just bring that up so you can see I'm not following along the pencil line I'm actually coming away from it because if you follow the pencil line right to the middle and then do the same on that side you end up cutting the whole thing out so as I mentioned in my previous tutorial it's kind of like a cracker you just want a small amount to kind of join it in the middle enough to tie the ribbon around so again from the bottom here I'm just going to come up and exactly how I've done the other one coming away from that pencil mark until I join like so okay don't worry if it's not exact, the ribbon's going to cover it anyway. Um, so again, fold all of those pieces down because you don't want to risk cutting anything off and then you can come in again. In fact, I need to fold the whole thing over like so. Again, always make sure that you fold these pieces down otherwise you'll cut them from the other side. And again, just work your way up and then again down this side. And you can see I'm not taking too much time on it. It's a quick project. You just need to get that rough kind of style like so. So again I'll show you one more time. Fold again, fold these pieces down and over like so just so I can get in. I'll do this top first. So you just come down like so on this side. I'd say the main thing is you want to make sure you get a really sharp point on this top bit because that's what you're going to see. Again come up here Especially if you're using a busy print like I am, you really won't notice any of this, um, you know, it being slightly um, not exactly mirrored. Whereas I guess maybe if you're using a plain paper, you might have to take a bit more time with this, just because you maybe would see it more. Okay, so that's what you should have on the bottom. So you just need to repeat that now on these two okay, here. So that is now the pattern you should have. So I've got the little tab here on the right hand side, full strip there, and then this kind of cracker looking there here and there. It's not a cracker is it, it's a sweet shape, that's why I've done it. So there you go, I think it looks really good. So now we can assemble it. So as I mentioned at the beginning, the other good thing about this, which I didn't mention in the other tutorial, is that it all folds flat. So um, as I'm going to be taking this to my nans, it's perfect because I can just sandwich it between one of my um, folders and it will stay nice and flat. So you just want to run your tape, I'm using the red tape just because it's nice and strong, just along that um, little tab, just uh, kind of making sure you kind of stay close to the score line, just so you get a really nice join. Make sure it's all nicely stuck down. Obviously at this point as well, you might want to rub out these bits here. I'm not too worried because once it's all closed, you're not going to see it, but just quickly go over and rub them out if you want to do that. And then just bring this piece down here and just fold that over so you get a really nice join like so. So now when you lift that up 
you've got that there, you can't, again, this is such a busy print, you can't see anything. So now I would say that that would be my back, so when I flip it over, this is the side I'm gonna decorate. So you just then wanna just fold these pieces in, and what I would also say is fold the bottom one up first, and then bring that one down, and again, fold the bottom one, and bring that one down, again, because then you don't see this bit here, you just see that, okay? And then you just need to tie the ribbon around. Maybe actually rub out there, because I'm just thinking you would see the pencil, so I'll do that in a minute. But there you have it, you can already see this really, really cute box. So what you can do, so it's easy to decorate, is just undo it and put it down flat. So I know now that I've got this area to decorate. So I'm just gonna push that to one side and show you the letters. So I've die cut some letters here on yellow card, and then I thought actually it's more of a mustard, it's quite a deep yellow, um, yeah, deep, a deeper, darker yellow. So I have used some of these, which unfortunately I don't think we can get here because I found these in a charity shop and they are these metallic rub-on um, pigment um, waxes and they're brilliant. I've used similar years ago um, and um, I saw them, they were two pound each and I thought I'm gonna grab those. They are from America, Fairmont, I believe that's American. Um, apologies if not. <laughs> um, yeah, MN, is that Minnesota or somewhere like that maybe? I could be completely wrong, but I do try to keep up with all the American states and uh, things like that. And this, it doesn't say a date on it anywhere, and it says patent pending, and there's not even a website address. So, yeah, I actually can't give you very... <laughs> uh, oh, hang on. Oh, no, no, nothing on that one either. So if anybody knows or recognises these, if they're still going as a company or if they now have a company name, and if the patent was approved, let me know. Ah, actually it now says on these ones, I've just noticed, it says craft, it says craft, and then it's got a dash, and then T Products Inc. That's who it's manufactured by. So there you go. Again, I'll have a little look, but I've used these. So I have used the metallic here, and then you've got luster, and then you've got another metallic. And basically, all you do, so let me just grab, <clears throat> I'll use a bit of tissue underneath just so I don't. Um, there is a product to actually seal it, um, like a professional product, but I just use hairspray. And you don't even need to do that. Once you polish it off with a piece of tissue, I find nothing comes off. And all, all I've done is just rubbed a little bit on my finger and then you just rub it on. And it just takes to it so quickly and you get such an intense um, effect. Now I wanted it slightly um, I guess mottled, I seem to like that word, so I didn't do like a completely full coverage on it. Um, so I've kind of pulled, really kind of stretched it there so it's not covering everything. I'll bring it up to the camera and you'll see it better in a minute. But it's a good way to colour card quickly. So there you go. You don't get very much left on your finger, it pretty much all comes off and you can just rub off any excess there. And then with this tissue, just buff it up. So literally I'm just rubbing over it, nothing comes off, it just, it is just like a wax, just like a wax that you put on wood and stuff, you're just using it exactly the same way except you're using your finger. And now, none of that's coming off, but like I said, you can just spray it with some hairspray. So if I just bring those up for you to see closer, like so, oh, yeah, there we go. Can you see there's like a shine to it? There you go. Really, really nice. It's quite subtle, but you can see I haven't got done a full coverage because again, this is quite a antiquey looking, and I wanted it to have a bit of an aged kind of look about it. So I've done my letters, and then I've got this um, doilies, and I'm also going to rub some of that gold on the edges just to distress it. I'll just take these out. You get loads in here, absolutely tons. Forty. I reckon there's even more than that. Okay, so just take one of those out, like so. Grab another bit of tissue. And literally, all I'm going to do, sorry if the light keeps dipping in and out today, the sun's not sure what it's doing. So again, I'm just gonna put a bit on my finger and just grab the ends. See there? I'm almost like, not dirty in the muck, but because this is a die cut, you get that, you see the print really, really nicely. And it just gives it a really pretty little something extra. I just didn't want that crisp white because there's a lot of white obviously with the background there. Again, not really, you know, 
thinking about it too much, just rubbing it on. And these are great to hide uh, mistakes as well, which is always a good thing. And that lasts for ages. You get it's it's a real um, intense, thick um, wax, so you do get a lot. I'm just going to rub out any extras there, just to kind of the letters are covering this, but just to give it a bit more of a aged look. There we go. Again, you can rub it over, but um, it's it's like a quite a can't think of the word I'm trying to use but you don't get anything coming off that but again if I kind of hold that up can you see it's picking up little bits of shimmer it's lovely really nice okay so that's that all done so what I want to do is do some kind of like nan across there and this is going to go on top and then I've got those where did I put those little rosettes? These little rosettes are going to decorate on top. I might actually fold the doily as well. And then I've got a little sentiment that I might put, maybe, no, I might, might not put a sentiment. I'm going to put a bird or something there. So I'm just going to play around and dress this all up. Okay, so there is my decoration all done. I really like that. So I put the little bird above there. I've actually cut the doilies down and kind of... Um, you know, done a bit of a concertina fold and I've done it there, put the little rosette and then I've also put some little sequins there as well. Might put a few more up there, I'm not sure. Okay, so now you just need to tie your ribbon. I've actually decided to change the ribbon. I've gone for this really nice velvet, um, it's almost like a mauvey grey and it works really well with this one here. So let's just see how much we're going to need. Okay, so I've just done that one there and it's about 16 inches of ribbon. So again, just fold the bottom one up first, then that top one down. And then just do your bow. And there you have it. A gorgeous, large, sweetie wrapper gift box. And I just think they're brilliant. And this will fit a lot in. The actual box size measures up at five by four. So the box itself, five by four, that's a really roomy size. So you can get lots of things in there. I know exactly what I'm putting in this for my nan and I know she will love it. So there you have it. Hope you've enjoyed this um, other tutorial to show you the larger version and please hit the like button if you did and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye!